Hi, it's Jake Cowie from the Chardon Polka Band, and today we're going to be talking to my friend Joe Valencic. Joe is the museum director and vice president of the National Cleveland Style Polka Hall of Fame. In 2020, the Chardon Polka Band released an album called Oh No, Not Again. And on that album, we cover a song called Just Because. Now, this song is one of the most popular polkas there's ever been. So we're going to talk to Joe Valencic about the history of this song. The guy who made it popular, Mr. Frankie Yankovic, Cleveland-style polka music, and a whole lot more. So stick around and, uh, well, enjoy the conversation. Well, let me start by asking you, why did you choose Just Because? We're a polka band, and, and that's one of the most important songs there is to polka music, right? It was one of the big hits after World War II. America was looking for good time music, and Frank Yankovic came along with his jolly accordion sound, and it really fit the bill. GIs were coming home from the war. They wanted to go to dances. They wanted to meet girls at uh, neighborhood halls, at church halls. And polka music at that time had a certain wholesome quality to it. It was something down home and familiar to the parents. So they didn't mind if the kids went uh, polka dancing to hear Frankie Yankovic or Johnny Vadnall uh, or uh, any of the many groups that were playing, not just in Cleveland, but throughout the polka belt from the mid-Atlantic all the way up to the Iron Range of Minnesota. Just because it has kind of a, a strange history, it started out um, it was first recorded in 1929 for Hawaiian guitar. Hawaiian music was really popular in the 20s. And uh, the Shelton brothers from Alabama wrote this song called Just Because, and this Hawaiian band played it. Then they recorded it, the brothers did, in, in I think, 33, uh, and again in 35. And a couple other uh, uh, what were then called hillbilly bands picked up on it, too. So you'll hear Just Because played with mandolin and and... Uh, just really a folksy sound. And this and, was, uh, you're saying this was all before the Yankovic This was version. all before Frankie Yankovic. Okay. So Johnny Pecan, who was Frankie Yankovic's uh, um, accordionist, they, he had two accordions in the band. Uh, he heard uh, some guys singing this song uh, when he was in the service during the war, and he taught himself how to play the song. Supposedly, there's as many as 40 different lyrics to it. But at any rate, uh, Johnny uh, memorized a few. And in uh, 1947, uh, uh, Columbia had Frankie Yankovic and his band with Johnny Pecan come to New York to record uh, a bunch of tunes because they, Columbia was anticipating a strike. And so they wanted to have some music uh, in reserve. And there was five minutes left of studio time. And um, Frankie didn't want to waste it. So he said, hey, Johnny, let's play that song that you learned during the war. So they ran through it once. They played it once. They did it in one take. And it was like the B side of whatever, C, uh, whatever recording they were going to be coming out with. And that's the one that became a hit. Just because you think you're so pretty. Just because you think you're so hot. Just because you think you've got something that nobody else has got. It that really went nationwide in 47 and 48. I mean, places like Boston, I mean, they don't even know from Polka, but Boston, they sold like 20 or 30,000 uh, copies of uh, Just Because. And it was just, it's great lyrics, it's fun. You can uh, dance to it, you can, uh, you can sing along with it. The, simple, the lyrics are simple. So it had all the makings of a hit. But what I find amazing is it's an accordion song. It's a, it's a polka, but with a country western sensibility. So uh, it, it, you know, Elvis Presley has since recorded it. Brian Setzer, Paul McCartney. I mean, you know, there's just something about that song that everybody loves. In, in the parlance of our times, the thing went viral, right? I mean, that's what we call it now. Like, you know, you have a YouTube hit or whatever, it's viral, everybody knows it. I mean, this is how this song permeated every jukebox. Um, uh, Billboard said that it was like the number 35 jukebox song of the year uh, back in 48. But uh, we had friends that went on vacation uh, uh, around that time to Taos, New Mexico. And they wanted to see the uh, uh, Pueblos, uh, the adobe houses. 
and um, you know it's looking very picturesque and they're as they're getting closer all of a sudden they're hearing just because booming from one of the houses on uh, at, at Taos so it's like everybody was singing along with just because that's that's phenomenal I mean what what a hit and it, I mean it really did in some ways put the Cleveland style scene kind of def defined it in a way and put it on the map in a way and I know that the Cleveland scene existed other than just because I'm not saying it's responsible right. for it but I'm, I mean in a lot of ways it definitely put the Cleveland thing on the map and uh, just just that our style in town it it really did this was the first Cleveland style uh, polka or waltz that uh, hit the charts and um, uh, Frankie did get a million seller out of it. I mean, this, these are in the days when, you know, a recording cost 75 cents. I mean, that was a lot. It yeah. was an investment, but people liked the song so much. So it was his first gold record. And it was, it attracted young people. Bob Dylan, when he was growing up, he wrote in his memoirs that the first music he was attracted to as a child was polka music because it was loud. I don't want to say it was the Lombada of 1948, but certainly it got people uh, uh, on the dance floor and uh, hopping around uh, with the polka beat. So is this the first time you've recorded Just Because? This is the first time we recorded Just Because. I'm telling you, honey, I'm through with you. Just because, just because. That's one of the songs everybody comes over to the merchandise table. You know, we got our stand set up with our CDs and our t-shirts and they go, hey, which which album has the Beer Barrel Polka? Which album has Just Because? And, and we're like, oh, uh, well, we, we, we haven't recorded that one. Where's in heaven there's no beer? We haven't recorded that one either. So it's like, oh, okay, you know, let's, let's put, that. a lot of the favorites are on this album. So I'm here with uh, Joe Valencic, who is the, the director of the National Cleveland Style Polka Hall of Fame Museum, and he's the vice president of the Hall of Fame. What is Cleveland Style Polka Music? Uh, we like to think of it as kind of uh, roots music, American roots music, in that the, uh, the nucleus of the sound comes from Slovenian folk songs that were brought here by Slovenians 100 years ago. In towns like Cleveland, Milwaukee, Chicago, uh, uh, mining towns in western Pennsylvania, and these uh, little accordion duos and trios uh, were playing the old folk music, but they were starting to pick up influences from uh, country music, from uh, Tin Pan Alley, uh, from uh, uh, blues, other forms of American music, and adding their own uh, uh, touch to it. So uh, you'll get, um, you know, like Johnny Pecan will play uh, accordion and, and a straightforward uh, uh, folk melody, but then he'll put in a blue note or he'll do some syncopation and to give it that certain American sound. So in the 20s and the 30s, uh, other people are hearing this music and they like it. And uh, these young musicians like Frankie Yankovic, he started in 1934 with his first band. Uh, he starts uh, doing a more jazzier style of folk music. Also, he had the lyrics and the titles translated into English so people would know what he was singing about. And um, the next thing you know, he becomes kind of a local hit. But Frankie Yankovic was different because he had charisma. He knew how to connect with an audience. You know, he just had this uh, uh, great uh, um, smiling uh, presence on the stage. Now he knew that he wasn't the best accordionist in the world, so he always had a better accordion player with him. Uh, and just because it was uh, Johnny Pecan, who then spun off with his own orchestra later on. But the Cleveland style kind of is comparable to maybe a Dixieland setup. I mean, you have the accordion is the lead instrument uh, that sets the tone. You have um, uh, the banjo uh, and the and the bass for the beat. Um, you uh, uh, certainly have a drum set. Uh, you might have a saxophone. Frank Yankovic didn't like saxophones, but other, other bands will have a saxophone or a clarinet. Uh, and sometimes a, a, a vocal to go along with it. 
So it's kind of a traditional small dance band setup plus accordion, uh, but the banjo makes it uh, American as, as do the drums and the saxophone. It's something that's always gets people on the dance floor. It's nostalgia, it's fun, it's uh, um, uh, part of what, what uh, they grew up with. I mean, yeah. in, in Cleveland, you can't get away from polka music. Some people think that's a bad thing. I don't know. <laughs> Other people make a career out of it. Yeah, so. I, th I think it's a good thing. <laughs> well, what drew you to polka music when you were growing up? So um, I'll, now I'll answer your question. I mean, yeah. this was something that happened like 50 years before you were born, and yet you're, you're playing it. That, okay, so when you were talking about Cleveland style and that, that Frankie Yankovic charisma, bands that are or were still doing that when I was 14 years old is how I got into polka music. I'll never forget the first, first polka show I ever went to. I had, I had seen Weird Al playing the accordion on TV, and that looked really interesting to me. So I, I convinced my mom to get me an accordion at the thrift shop. And then she took me to this show at the Firehouse Winery. Um, oh, yeah, yeah the, they had a little polka festival every year. And she took me there and I said, well, where are we going? She goes, it's a, it's a polka music show. And I go, what's polka music? And she goes, that's what people play on the accordion. And so I went, oh, okay, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. And um, Tomsic was playing, Joey Tomsic was playing, and uh, Del Sinchek was playing. Wow. But between all the band sets, there was this guy, I think his name was Augie or Ozzy, and it was just a guy with an accordion, no band. He was on a separate stage, and uh, I'll never remember, I'll never forget, he had like a blanket covering his accordion so it didn't get too hot. So he'd get up there, he'd take the blanket off his accordion, put it on, and the other bands were playing like dance music, and everybody was on the dance floor. And then this guy took his stage, and it was just these songs that everyone around me knew. They weren't necessarily up dancing to them, but they knew the songs they were singing along. And I'll never forget, he played In Heaven There's No Beer and everybody's laughing and clapping. And I saw that and I just loved the humor of the song. And I went, that's what I wanna do. He's making everybody laugh. He's very dynamic. And then he, I'll never forget, he played the July to Polka. I still, I still play that song uh, every week, you know, I got a girlfriend, she is my honey. It's hilarious. It's a hilarious song. And it's still, it's still good music, but the hilarity and, and charisma of it um, was just, I, I just fell in love with that. And um, I, I, I went to my accordion teacher the next week and I, I said, I want to concentrate on this polka stuff. Don't teach me any of this other music you're trying <laughs> to show me. Let's zero in on this polka. And I always, it was always the, the polkas with the, the lyrics, you know, the, the just because, the July to polka, the baby doll polka. Um, you know, if it had kind of a funny lyric to it, that's what I wanted to zero in on. So I, I think it was all that, that charisma and, and kind of that, that fun to it that, that you're talking about. I just fell in love with that. Oh, I've got a girlfriend, she is my honey. She only loves me when I have money. When I am busted, she gets disgusted. She goes with Tony and I get so lonely. When uh, you, you play your gigs, what are like the top five songs that folks request? Oh, I mean, Who Stole the Kishka is definitely up there. Just Because is one we play almost every single show. You know, even if it's not requested, it's just part of the culture when we play here in Cleveland and when we play elsewhere, um, when we play elsewhere, we often start with just because we, uh, and we tell the audience, hey, we're from Cleveland, Ohio, and so is this song. Um, if, if they're old school polka fans, they immediately light up. The Beer Barrel Polka is always requested. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, the, those are definitely, the top ones are still those classic polka favorites. I, I love when I get a request that I don't even know because I'll, I'll write it down and be like, well, that's a polka I need to look up. But I mean, nine times out of 10, it's beer barrel polka and heaven, there's no beer. You know, the TikTok polka. To the point where, I, you know, sometimes I, I've heard different like singers and stuff say, oh man, don't you get sick of getting a request for this song? Don't you get sick of getting a request for this song? And I go, absolutely not. I'll play the beer barrel polka till I'm blue in the face. 
which is too much. It's fun, you know? If, if uh, like Dingus Day, all right, Dingus Day has exploded here in Cleveland. 30,000 people or more. Right, right. And, and part of that is the fact that polka is kind of ingrained in the Cleveland culture. And when, when you go there and play Just Because or the Beer Barrel Polka or in Heaven There Is No Beer, every single person is screaming and, and singing along and, and polka is on top of the world. It's awesome. So what bands do you listen to uh, that are contemporary? Every week it's something different, uh, you know, and it depends on what uh, medium I, I'm listening to it on because I got YouTube, you know, so um, like Molly B does a, a Tuesday night show. So often I'll tune in or I'll, I'll, uh, I'll bring it up after the fact. The Bulls and Beer Band from Lincoln, Nebraska, Brave Combo, I mean, they're, they're older now. They've been doing this since the, the what the late 70 i think 79 uh you know they were bringing home grammys they they made it to rolling stone magazine you know how friggin cool is that uh of course our, our buddy alex meixner from yeah. florida uh he's great there's a lot of contemporary polka music but then you know i got a record player upstairs um and that, i i got two twin boys they're 10 months old and that's one of the things i do to stop them if they're crying is i'll throw a a, a vinyl <laughs> polka record on you know so we're spinning uh myron florin's a favorite as is hank holler and i just pick up one of the kids and dance around the room and they just love it so um i've listened to the uh polka blast from okay. hank holler probably uh, uh i don't know uh, a whole bunch since i had these kids just because they they love it so i, li I listen to a little bit of everything I yell, hey, Alexa, play some polka music and see what happens. I think it's great that you've uh, created this uh, uh, polka revival, kind of boosted it, because you bring a certain uh, sensibility of the music that you grew up with in the way that you play and, and, and the way uh, uh, you present yourselves on stage. And I think it's important to keep the music uh, fresh and lively and, uh, and young, because uh, I think that's what has helped polka music uh, last is that with each generation a new group of talents come along with a different uh, uh, point of view on playing polka music and they bring something of their times into it and that keeps it uh, moving forward Just when you think polka is going to die out, <clears throat> there comes a new sound along, a new group, new personalities, and it just starts up all over again. Yeah, polka will, will never die. Kind of goes in waves you know sometimes polkas uh are rediscovered and everybody's saying wow why haven't i heard this music before or gee i remember this when i was little how come it fell out of style and um so you're riding the wave right now <laughs> thanks man yeah well it's interesting because you you were saying how you know when cleveland style was starting you know they had these kind of like traditional combos but then they brought in the drums and the sax yeah. from american music you know, it's, it's and all, yeah, and it, so it's always been a, a little bit traditional and then a little bit innovational. That's why, you know, I've never understood, like, if people start hassling us, you know, because we're doing something different with it, I'm like, so did Yankovic. That was different right. for the time, you know? Well, people hated Yankovic. A lot of people hated Yankovic's music. They thought that he was corrupting these honorable old uh, folk songs, but he was just putting a contemporary spin on it. Yeah. And what attracted the audiences. Even if you're singing someone else's song, you know, music's gotta come from your heart and everything. And I think we've always felt as a band that we have to be true to who we are. We're playing this traditional music, but in our own context. And that's, when I started, I was in high school and that was the only way 
I could do it without getting stuffed in a locker, you know. I couldn't put on the frilly shirt and, and play traditional polkas. We had to, you know, make it hip to high schoolers, or at least our version of hip, you know. There's a what lot of would it though. take to have a polka top 40 hit today? What are the qualities in that song that would make it a hit? That's a really good question. I mean, Just Because had a lot of factors that made it a gold record. And I don't know what that looks like today. I mean, even the concept of a gold record, like, is that a TikTok hit? Is that, you know, Facebook? I don't know. Um, but I, you know, Polka, like I said, Polka is never going to die. It's, it's always going to be out there. And we don't know what the next resurgence looks like or the next giant song looks like. I mean, who knows who's going to do a, a polka on, like, like I mentioned, TikTok. I barely know what that is, but it's a hip, cool thing. And all this old music is getting reused on TikTok, you know. Well, what do you think the influence of social media has been on polka music? Social media, YouTube, and all that has made so much more polka accessible. I, I mentioned Molly B. Molly B does a, a Tuesday night broadcast every week on their Facebook page and, and you log in and, and like 400 people are watching it live. Couple weeks later, 5,000 people have watched one of those streams. Using social media, using YouTube, you can play a show and a year later, 5,000 people have seen that show. 10,000 people have seen that show. You can record a song, and instead of just having to put a physical copy in someone's hand, that, that song goes on YouTube, Facebook, social media, and, and it's introduced to this wide audience of people. Um, I, get, I get phone calls, emails, text messages, Facebook messages, e every month from people going, hey, I discovered you via fill in the blank. You know, we have friends from Instagram. We have friends from Facebook. We have friends from YouTube. Um, they then, you know, subscribe to whatever that social media is. Yeah, they, they like you on Facebook, but they subscribe to what you're doing. And to me, that's phenomenal. And, and one of the big reasons I try to put other bands on our Facebook page, other bands promote them on Instagram, is because we have this polka platform we care about polka music, so let's introduce you to this other band. And, and now it is, as they say, a social network. This pandemic has really demonstrated that to us like never before, uh, because typically we did rely on live shows as our main way to communicate with an audience, which means, you know, Joe Valencic, you wouldn't see me unless I was playing in, in your area or within a few hours and you really wanted to come see us. Whereas now we're putting so much more material online and, and I'm getting, I have, you know, weekly viewers in Oregon and they get, instead of just seeing me the one time a year, I go to Oregon, they're plugging into what we do every week. And, and wow, I mean, what a connection tool for musicians, for artists. It's just phenomenal. Okay. Joe, what is the National Cleveland Style Polka Hall of Fame and Museum? The National Cleveland Style Polka Hall of Fame and Museum got its start back in 1985. Uh, around that time, uh, Frankie Yankovic uh, won the first, the very first uh, Grammy Award for Best Polka Album. And uh, also, uh, Cleveland was announced to be the home of a new Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So a group of uh, musicians and community leaders uh, in the Cleveland area and in Pennsylvania got together and thought, well, okay, we've got Frankie winning a major award, a Grammy, uh, uh, you know, 60 years at that point of uh, a, a wonderful career. Uh, and uh, rock and roll music is getting its uh, museum. Why not a museum to the Cleveland style polka that had such an influence on American culture and is still going strong in parts of the country. And so uh, I came from a museum background. I was a curator at the Western Reserve Historical Society. And uh, we kind of all uh, brought our talents together to start the uh, uh, Polka Hall of Fame, uh, sort of uh, a, a pantheon to honor the greats of Cleveland style polka music. 
but also to tell the story of uh, uh, the Cleveland style polka going back more than a century ago from the nationality in Slovenian neighborhoods of America. But what's also important is we have an archive of five or 6,000 polka recordings uh, that uh, we don't think there's anything comparable around the world. And uh, we work with other uh, cultural institutions uh, in this country and, and in Europe on uh, um, documenting the sound and preserving it. We're in the process of digitizing some uh, vintage recordings, especially old 78s. Uh, but we also have um, the events that we put on. Uh, we do about six uh, polka events during the course of the year. Uh, our way of uh, preserving uh, a, a style of music that had a lot of meaning uh, for folks in this country and is still relevant and still a lot of fun today. Well, thank you so much, Joe. It's been great uh, talking about Just Because, talking about Frankie Yankovic and polka music with you. So thanks for joining me. Thank you, Jake. Polka on. That's right. Polka on. If you'd like to learn more about the National Cleveland Style Polka Hall of Fame and Museum, visit www.clevelandstyle.com. And I'd like to encourage you to check out Frankie Yankovic's original recording of Just Because or a few of his subsequent takes on this wonderful tune. And if you'd like to hear the Chardon Polka Band's version of this old classic, it's on our album, Oh No, Not Again. Thanks. I'm Jake from the Chardon Polka Band, and we'll see you next time. Just because you think I'd be foolish to stay home.